Welcome to this lecture series on reinforcing learning in the brain. In this video, we will look at three factor learning rules. Three factor learning rules arise from reinforcement learning. What's the difference between the three factor rules and two factor rules in applications? We'll see that neuromodulators in biology can act as a third factor, and we also see experimental support for three factor learning rules. A learning rule with two factors is happy learning. It's essentially unsupervised learning. There is no notion of success, no notion of reward. The weight change depends on the state of the presynaptic neuron, spike arrival at the synapse, at the state of the postsynaptic neuron, for example, spiking activity of the postsynaptic neuron, and on the weight itself. Now, with three factors, we will have, in addition, a notion of reward or of success. Let's have a look at this. Here's a situation where a mouse is in a maze. Suppose the mouse moves forward. Now it sits here and it has to decide whether it goes left or right. It decides to go to the right. So at this location where it sits right now, a certain subset of cells goes on, which represent the place. And then the mouse decides to move right which means at the representation of the action plan, for example, in striatum, it, uh, it's also a subset, subset of neurons that are active. Now, what we have in this three-factor rules is that the co-activation of sending neuron, pre-neuron, and postsynaptic neuron, receiving neuron, leads to a synaptic eligibility trace. It sets a flag, it marks the synapse, but itself it's not yet a weight change. And now this synaptic eligibility trace keeps memory over a second or two or three, but then it decays. And so when moving to the right, there is no success signal. It will just decay and go away. Later, the mouse will again be at the same location. And this time he decides to go left, to, go, to turn left. Now it's a different combination of active neurons. It's the same set of place cells, but different active neurons, which again are marked by an eligibility trace. And this time there is indeed a success signal. The success signal is broadly distributed across the whole network. It comes with a delay of one second because the red has actually to move towards the Swiss cheese and it likes the Swiss cheese. It acts like a reward signal. It acts as a success signal. And so in this case, we now have a transformation of the eligibility trace in an actual weight change. And inside the brain, the dopamine signal is able to transmit reward or success. And reinforcement learning uses these success signals defined as reward minus expected reward. And if you have TD learning, then the expected reward is a difference between two values, same in SARSA, in policy gradient, it could be the reward just compared to a running average for expected reward. So different combinations of reinforcement learning algorithms that we can see in the book of Sutton and Bato all give rise to three-factor learning rules. So three-factor learning rules have a presynaptic part, a postsynaptic part, weight dependence, and in addition, the success part. So pre and post together is a condition. In addition, we need the success, success signal, and then the weight will change. The two signals, pre and post, are local in the sense they are synapse specific. They pick out the synapse, whereas the success signal is a broadly diffused signal or a broadcast signal and in the brain, neuromodulators can take over this row. So again, a comparison on the left-hand side, we have happy learning. Happy learning is unsupervised learning. It's sort of passive changes. There's no idea of action. There's no idea of success. And it exploits statistical correlations between the two neurons. And with that, you can do PCA, you can do ICA, it's good for development, setting up a state representation to, to develop good filters. With reinforcement learning, we have in addition the success signal. And uh, 
it's uh, useful for learning a new behavior and that is indeed the topic of reinforcement learning so again the newer modulator is the new signal the newer modulator can submit success in the sense of reward minus expected reward it could also signal interestingness or surprise or attention or novelty and whatever its specific role we need it as a third factor to implement the weight change now what are these new modulators a first candidate a famous candidate is dopamine as i mentioned earlier dopamine is um, as, uh, dopamine neurons cells that send out dopamine sit somewhere deep down in the brain and then they make projections basically all over the brain it's really a broadcast signal except this region here which is related to visual cortex which is not reached so we should really think of dopamine signals as a broadcast signal that are sent all over the network so they are they have near global actions and dopamine is one example another one is noradrenaline also called norepinephrine again it comes from special neurons that sit very deep in the brain and send out signals nearly everywhere now the classic idea that was established by wolfram schultz and colleagues uh, a long time ago is that dopamine is related to success where success is defined as reward minus expected reward and i will show evidence in a minute now, dopamine will also react a little bit to novelty and surprise. There's no need that the dopamine axis is perfectly aligned with this success axis. Now, other neuromodulators like noradrenaline could then also signal for surprise. And in the end, different neuromodulators span different axes of novelty, of surprise, of success, of reward, of stress of attention so these are often emotional signals that are spread out all over the brain the formalism in a general framework is then i have a signal from the activity of presynaptic neuron so it could be some function of xj i have a signal arising from the activity of postsynaptic neurons and again some function of phi i and this co-activation sets the eligibility trace that's step one the eligibility trace would decay over time lambda is smaller than one but if in time we have a success signal then this success signal is transmitted by a neuromodulator that acts as a factor as a third factor in the learning rule and this essentially in the end implements the change of the connection the connection will be strengthened the connection from neuron j to neuron i what i showed in an earlier video is that hepian changes can be induced by co-activation of pre and post synaptic neuron so a strong signal is pre post 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 I would also call this a Hepian signal. The postsynaptic neuron does not emit spikes, but its variable, the voltage, the cell membrane potential is elevated above the standard value. And so I have some kind of coincidence between pre-activity and post-activity. Now, the new thing is the three-factor rule. Yes, we have pre and post together, and pre post 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 is a very strong signal but then we have the modulator the modulator could be dopamine and importantly the modulator could potentially come with a delay of a second the mouse has to walk a little bit before it finds the cheese first i take the action then i get my reward now neuroscience as experimental community has for a long time focused on different forms of Hepian paradigms of inducing synaptic changes. More recently, the focus has turned to three factor rules. Again, here the idea I have presynaptic activity, the green neuron is active. I have postsynaptic activity, this neuron is active. 
The green neuron makes also a contact here, but the postsynaptic cell is not active. Hence, it's only this synapse here that sets an eligibility trace because this is the synapse that has seen joint activity of pre- and postsynaptic neuron. The synaptic flag plays the role of the mathematical eligibility trace. And uh, if later a success signal comes and this success signal, dopamine, will be distributed all over the brain, then this one specific synapse is increased, whereas other synapses that only receive the success signal will not change. So step one, coactivation sets the eligibility trace. Step two, it can decay. Step three, but if a neuromodulator comes in before the decay, then the eligibility trace is translated into a weight change. And that means that the connection is strengthened. And this is now how these experiments were done. Experiments in 2014 by Yakishita et al. They used this stimulus pre, post, 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 repeated several times, a very strong induction protocol. And then in addition, they gave a dopamine signal here, denoted by DA. And this dopamine signal could, for example, come with a delay of one second. And you see that with a delay of one second, I have a positive change of this synapse. If it comes immediately afterwards, then the change is slightly stronger. And even if there's a slight overlap, that's even better. But if the signal comes way too early or way too late, it will not induce a weight change. Now, these experiments were done in striatum. That's interesting because the striatum is involved in action selection. Moreover, the experimentalists could check that after this short protocol that lasts a second and maybe another second of delay for dopamine, the weight change remains for at least 50 minutes. And this is seen on these figures that you may have seen in an earlier video. So the little, uh, with the red triangle uh, points, the little blobs, these are the spines of the synapse. And at this point here, they give the stimulation protocol. And then you see two minutes later, this synapse is stronger. 50 minutes later, the same synapse is still strong. So yes, it's induced rapidly. And yes, the changes are stable. They persist over 50 minutes. So three factors are needed, according to this experiment, for synaptic changes. A presynaptic factor. This could be spikes of the presynaptic neuron or the effect of spike arrival at the synapse, some low pass filter of the spike, a postsynaptic factor, which could be the spikes of the postsynaptic neuron or increased voltage or spikes minus expected number of spikes for this situation. And then we need a third factor. And the third factor could be a neuromodulator such as dopamine. So this part is standard long-term potentiation, learning rules in the brain, Yes, learning rules is Hepian learning, which depends on pre and post synaptic activity. Reinforcement learning depends in addition on neuromodulators such as dopamine indicating reward. And the three factor rule needs presynaptic signal, postsynaptic signal, neuromodulator signal, but they do not have to be at the same time. It can come with a delay. 